This is uh, DC Lesson 4, Part B, and we're going to get into power. The previous lesson introduced you to the concept of power and doing work. Now we're specifically going to get into electrical power. So in this lesson, we're going to explain electrical power and the ways of finding the power taken by an electrical load. So in our textbook, Electrical Trade Principles by Phillips, the section we're dealing with is section 4.2, Power. So power is the rate at which energy is used or the rate at which work is done. Remembering that our power or exercising power is actually work. So power is the rate at which work gets done. The unit of power is the watt named after Isaac Watts, which uses the uppercase capital W as its symbol. By definition, power is one watt if one joule of energy is transferred in one second. So lots of ones there. So the definition of power is one watt if one joule of energy is transformed in one second. Power is given the symbol P, capital P or uppercase P, and it's the rate of doing work. And here's a little metaphor that explains it. We have both men covering a fixed dis distance. Both men have the same amount of energy and have done the same amount of work. The runner has taken less time to do so and therefore has applied more power. So both men, one walking, one running, both have used the same amount of energy and have done the same amount of work. That is, travel over, let's say, 100 metres. The runner has done it in far less time, maybe 10 or 11 seconds, where the person walking may have taken maybe a minute and a half, two or three minutes. Therefore, the person who has run it has done so, therefore has applied more power. So power, work and time. So the formula for power is power equals work over time. And I've put this little um, graph here. Let me just turn my pen on for a moment. I'll just change the colour. There we go. And you can see here work done. I'll just put a a magenta line through there. Now if I do the same amount of work but I do it really quickly that's like the runner. So this is like the runner in our uh, little example in our analogy. So the runner has got the same amount of work done. Here's the work on here. Here's the work scale. This is the amount of work that got done but got it done in a much shorter period of time. The person who walked is more like this part of the curve. They got the same amount of work done here, but they took a much longer time to get the work done. And of course, if we had, let's say, a um, small child who was, say, crawling the same distance, they might do the same amount of work And again, same amount of work gets done, 100 metres gets covered, but it takes an extremely long period of time for that to happen. So this is a very important concept to get your head around, that the amount of work hasn't changed, but the more power you have, the more quickly you can get that work completed. So the formula is power is equal to work divided by time. Where time, where power is in watts, work is in joules. So the power here is in watts, joules for work, and of course our time uses seconds. So here's an example. We've got two forklifts. 
they're both lifting a 200 kilo load and you'll notice we've got a big forklift and a small forklift the you know, visual metaphor is there for a reason they're both lifting the same distance they're both lifting the same mass the same weight so 200 kilos each but the larger more powerful forklift manages to lift it through that two meters in two seconds where the smaller forklift still can lift it but it takes eight seconds so the lifting the work done that's this bit here the work was the same the work was the same but the time much smaller here much larger here so we can say that uh, power is equal to work divided by time and here we had our 200 kilograms comes in at uh, 3920 joules we divide that by two because we've lifted it in two seconds and it tells us that it took 1960 watts of power of grunt to lift that load through two seconds the smaller forklift power equals work divided by time again same amount of work done 2920 joules divided by eight very much less power so 490 watts so you don't need a more powerful forklift but you're going to have to sacrifice some time it's going to take longer to lift the 200 kilos through the two meters so to summarize it again more power job done more quickly less power job done more slowly so you're simply sacrificing power against time so mechanical power mechanical power is a rating of how much work a machine such as a motor can do in a certain amount of time so mechanical power produced by a motor depends on its speed of rotation and the torque it is delivering at that particular speed our equation for this particular type of power is power is equal to 2 pi nt divided by 60 and the divide by 60 is there so we can work in revs per minute so p is the power so it's mechanical power in watts 2 pi is the circular reference it equates to approximately 6.28 and it's a standard constant when you're working with circles and n is the revolutions per minute or the rpm hence the 60 and t is the torque so the torque in newton meters remember from our last lesson torque is over distance over force so it's newton meters so here's a little example find the power of a motor delivering 20 newton meters of torque and it's running at 1440 rpm so 2 pi nt divided by 60 uh, is our formula so formula hasn't changed and we simply substitute in the values the 6.28 is the 2 pi the n is 20 because that's 20 newton meters multiplied by the speed in rpm 1440 divided by 60 and it comes out at a power of 3000 and 14 watts so quite easy to calculate mechanical power as long as you know what the torque is and the rpm of the motor so efficiency this was 
comes back to uh, lesson three where we did some efficiency. Efficiency is a measure of how much input power is required for a certain type of output power. Again, often applied to mechanical devices like motors. So the efficiency N is equal to the power out divided by the power in multiplied by 100 to put it in percent. So that formula hasn't changed. It's the same formula we used in lesson three. Where efficiency is N, the power in and power out have to be in watts. And if we do the maths, For a little example, so here's a little example, a motor rated at 3014 watts and the power is consumed by the motor is 350 watts, determine the percent efficiency. So this is just a quick little example. We've got uh, 3104 is the output power in this particular case. The motor watts is 3500 multiplied by 100 gives us 86.1%. So 86.1% of the energy going into the motor is actually coming out as mechanical force. So that brings us to the end of uh, lesson number four, part B. We've learned a little bit about electrical power.